and eight. Hey! Ten. Nine. Come on, everyone. Eight. Ten. eight seven, 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 seven. Seven. Six. six five, five, five. Four. four three. three two, two. One. one. Welcome. Oh to the World Storytelling Cafe and the Swindon Spring Festival Family Day, which are normal circumstances. And if you're wondering where Swindon is, if you're in another part of the world, it's near Bristol on the southwest of England. And, um, and I would be normally in the north of Swindon on a small farm, small holding or something, a uh, 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 short, uh, uh, short farm and, um, it, 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 but it runs a wonderful guy called Matt Holland, who also puts together uh, the Swindon Spring Festival every year. And uh, so can we give Matt a big round of applause? Yes. I can't hear you sort of capping. Let's have a bit up there. This is going to be a participation thing. You get busy on those sliders. <laughs> right. OK. Right. So, uh, so I, I think I'll start with the story. Uh, and this is uh, this is this is about a lazy girl, and you keep seeing my finger coming forward, and I'm not poking you. It's just that I, I need to do things for this machine. Uh, hello, everyone. I can't see. Can everyone shout out their names? Sarah. Sarah. Hi. Hi. Okay, got you, got you. We're there, and I think there's a happy birthday in Sarah's house, isn't there? Whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> there is. Okay, so in Sarah and Sarah Corbett's house, there is. That's not Sarah or Neil. Well, there may be a so happy birthday in Sarah and Neil's house, but I'm not sure. But I think it's sort of Sarah Corbett's house is happy birthday. Yeah. Uh, it's right. Okay. Let's let's get on with our story. And uh, I, when I point to the screen, I not to get it done. What I'll, I'll do a thumbs up, and you can shout out. It, everyone join in. In fact, I don't care if there's the clattering of cups of tea and people calling dogs and children out. Just keep all the sliders up the whole time. Then, then we'll actually, I feel like I'm in a field with extraneous noises. Okay, so here we go. And it's from way back in time. And this is a story about the laziest girl in the whole world. Now, I know there are no lazy girls involved in, 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 in this enterprise at the moment. But just imagine, a real, I, it's difficult to stretch, you know, I'm, I, maybe there's no such thing as lazy girls in the whole world, I'm not sure. But uh, this, this was a lazy, to stretch our imaginations, and this is the laziest girl in the whole world. And she lived with her mum. And, her mum went on the way that some parents do. And I'm sure during lockdown, some of you have been stretched. And uh, she was going on, she went, oh, what a terrible daughter I've got. Oh, she'll never come to anything. Oh, what am I going to do with her? When who rode by but the prince himself? You must be really upset with your daughter, said the prince. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm just worried that she'll work too hard. But in <laughs> one day, she can take a sack of wool this tall and this wide. And normally, if I've been doing that live, I'd have been stretching my arms, but you can't see them, <laughs> right? So, so just take that and just imagine I'm describing a fish and it's getting wider and wider. Okay, so you can take a sack of wool this tall and this wide and spin it into the finest of thread. And on the next day, she can take that thread and weave it into the finest of cloth. And on the third day, she can take that cloth and cut and sew it into the finest of shirts. Wonderful, thought the prince. Maybe my mother, the queen, will allow me to marry her. Well, not many people turn on a prince, turn down a prince. You may question the wisdom of this, but they don't. So she got on the back of the, she got on the back of the, uh, of the prince's horse and rode off to the palace. And the queen saw him coming and thought, what is that prince doing with, a, with that country girl on the back of his horse? But when she saw how beautiful she was, when she heard what she could do, something wonderful, said, sir, bring down a sack of wool this tall 
on this wide. And to my, tomorrow I shall come knock, knock, knocking on your door. And I will expect that sack of wool to be spun into the finest of cloth. But there she is, she's looking at the sack of wool and she's looking at the spinning wheel and she's wishing she'd listened to her mother. At best, she'd be sent back to, the, to, to, to her home for lying. At worst, she'd have her head cut off. When in through the window came a little old woman, no taller than that, with the most enormous foot. And the girl looked at her. Now I'm going to get these pictures back in a second. The girl looked at her. And, uh, and, uh, and, and the old woman just asked her, asked, asked her trouble. She said, oh, that, and the girl told her. She said, I've got to spin this sack of wool into the finest of thread by tomorrow morning. I don't even know how to spin. She said, don't worry about it. You've got no troubles at all. All you've got to do is tomorrow morning invite me to the wedding. Of course I'll invite you. Now, now that wedding is going to come up a lot, right? And uh, so when I, when I point like that, I want everyone to shout wedding. Of course I'll invite you to the wedding. wedding. Not bad. <laughs> It'll get better through the story. Okay. <laughs> because uh, we will have more people joining us. And I've actually found if I touch my screen on the other side, you don't get my great finger coming up to the, the camera. That's amazing. I'm learning stuff all the time. Anyway, well, the next morning when the queen came knock, knock, knocking on the door, and, uh, uh, and the girl opened the door, there was the most amazing thread she's ever seen in all of her life. It was fine. It was beautiful. Wonderful, said the queen. Now, all you have to do is weave that thread into the finest of cloth. And uh, servants, bring me up my mahogany loom. And tomorrow I shall come knock knocking at your door and I will expect that thread to be woven into the finest of cloth. Well, there she is, she's looking at the loom and she's looking at the thread and she's looking at the shuttle and she's wishing she'd listen to her mother. She doesn't know whether to put the shuttle that way, that way, up her nose, out her ear, or what. When in through the window came a little old woman, no taller than that, wider in the middle than she was tall. And she asked the girl her troubles, and the girl told her, she said, that's no trouble at all. I'll do your weaving for you. Are you ready? All you've got to do is invite me to the... Wedding. 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 Bit slow, bit slow. It was a bit of a round there, but you know, simultaneous would be good. But there's probably a little, little technological uh, uh, this is nonsense going on here. Anyway, of course I'll. In Are we ready? Are we ready? Are we all ready? Of course, will I'll invite you to the wedding. wedding. Getting better all the time. Wedding. Well, the next day when the queen came knock knocking on the door. There was the finest cloth you've ever seen. It. You've got another word here. The finest cloth you've ever seen in all of they, your... They can't see you. No. Oh, can't see me. Can't. Look at it, they can't see you. Yes, we oh, can. What's that? We can see him, we can see him. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I like this sort of, you know, it's, it's like having earphones on, like, you know, and sort of talking to your backstage crew. It's fantastic. <laughs> right, anyway, so, uh, all of the finest cloth you've ever seen in all of your life. Oh. Well, wonderful, said the Queen. Now, all you have to do is cut and sew that cloth into the finest of shirts. And the finest of all will be worn by the prince himself at the... Wedding. 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 There she is, she's looking at the cloth and she's looking at the needle and she's looking at the scissors and she's looking at the cotton. And she doesn't know whether to thread the cotton through the scissors and sew with the scissors and cut with the needle or what. When in through the window came a little old lady with the most enormous... <laughs> Nose! <laughs> and she asked the girl her trouble. She said, that's no trouble at all. I'll do your cutting and your sewing for you. All you have to do is invite me to the... 
Wedding. 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 Of course, I'll invite you to the wedding. 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 Then the girl next day when the queen came knock, knock, knocking upon the door was there was the finest shirt you've ever seen in all of your life. life. And the finest ball was worn by the prince himself at the wedding. wedding. There they are at the wedding banquet. And there's the prince, and there's the queen, and there's the girl, his new bride. When the servant tapped the prince on the shoulder, excuse me, sir. There's a little old woman at the gate who said the bride invited her to the wedding. wedding. Any, friend, any friend of the bride is a friend of mine, said the prince. Bring her in. And in came little old lady with no taller than that, with the most enormous foot. Sat down next to the prince. Now, you know what it's like if you're invited to a bit of a do. You know, and they and people think it'd be nice to sit you down to someone you've never met before in all of your life because you're supposed to mix. And there's that embarrassing moment thinking, what on earth have I got in common with you? What can we say to each other? And it's that that that, that seems to go on for about an hour. In fact, it's about 10 seconds. Uh, and of course, it was the prince who had to speak first because he was the prince and he's looking at it and suddenly he looked and he saw a foot. So I know it's very rude. And I know it's... Uh, it's incredibly bad manners, but I got to know. Uh, how come you're only that tall and you've got a, a foot that size? She said, well, to tell you the truth, it's the spinning. I spend all day pedaling away at the treadle, making the spinning wheel go round and round and round. And the more I pedal at the treadle, the bigger my foot gets. And I've been spinning all my life. life. <laughs> Hello. Mm -hmm. And he looked at his wife's foot feet. He thought, oh, no. When the servant tapped him on the shoulder for a second time, excuse me, sire, but there's a little old woman at the gate who said the bride invited her to the wedding. wedding. Any friend of the bride is a friend of mine, said the Prince, <laughs> yes, Sue, it's great because you've heard me tell this 3,556 times before. So just, okay. just, just, you know, just lead everyone, will you? Great. Okay. So, uh, anyway, so, um, there's a friend of mine, said the prince, bring her in. And in came little old woman, no taller than that, wide in the middle than she was tall. And she pushed a few people aside. And she sat down next to the prince and the prince looked at her. Oh, I know it's incredibly rude and I know it's very bad manners, but I've got to ask, how come you're only that tall and you're that wide? She said, to tell you the truth, it's the weaving. I spend all day sitting and weaving and the more I sit and the more I weave, the wider I get. And I spend all day stretching from one side of loom to the other side of loom, from one side of loom to the other side of loom. And I get wider and wider and wider. And the prince looked at his wife, oh, oh no. When the servant tapped him on the shoulder for a third time, excuse me, sire, but there's a little old woman at the gate who said the bride invited her to the wedding. Any friend of the bride, bride is a friend of mine, mine. said the prince. prince. Bring her. In. in and in came a little old woman, no taller than that, with the most enormous nose. nose. No, it was a nose bigger than mine. It's a nose the size of an elephant's trunk. <laughs> and the prince looked at her and stroked her nose a bit and said, "Oh, I am the prince after all. I can ask what I like. Uh, how come you're only this tall? You've got a nose the size of an elephant's trunk." She said, "To tell you the truth." It's the cutting and the sewing. When I'm cutting, I'm sewing, I'm bending down over the table. When I'm bending down over the table and, 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 and my nose, because my nose is at the bottom of my head, all the blood runs into my head and then it runs into my nose. And the weight of the blood over the years has made my nose longer and longer and Long, longer. longer. I've been cutting and sewing all my life. And the prince looked at his at the bride and thought, oh no. And he stood up and he proclaimed to the whole banquet and the whole queendom 
that his bride was neither to spin, nor was to, she to weave, nor was she to cut and sew for the rest of her life. life. And though each and every one of you are as beautiful as the bride herself, if you want to be that lazy, you got to make sure you got three fairies to look after you. Why bend story end. Well, now, if I I just thought I'd invent a new character here. Uh, I'm, call, I'm, I'm calling this character, uh, hold on. Um, and if I can remember what I've just written, I, I'm gonna, just gonna change my hat here and I'm gonna put on my protected clothing and I, I, I'm going to become gangster granddad. <laughs> so, so there's a, and uh, you know, it, 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 you know, it, it, this is not freestyling. I'm a, I'm actually because I've got, I, I, I just, I just put this down to a couple of couple of minutes ago. Uh, so, so I, you go, it, it is one you can join in on. You know, it's kind of it. it it's for the shorties. Right, so we're going to... Uh, right. Keep the lockdown, lockdown. Keep the lockdown. 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 Never mind two metres, make it five. Never mind two metres, make it five. Oh, dear. Uh, keep your distance, stay alive. Keep your distance, stay alive. I've lost you all on this machine. Ah, oh, come back. Keep your distance, make it. No, keep your distance, stay alive. Keep the lockdown. Lockdown. Keep the lockdown, lockdown. Keep the lockdown. Lockdown. Stretch those legs when you run every day. Stretch those legs when you run every day. If you've only got a half an hour, make it pay. You've only got half an hour, make it pay. Keep the lockdown. Lockdown. Keep the lockdown. Lockdown. Keep the lockdown. 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 Uh, do some exercises for your mind. Do some exercises for your mind. To yourself and to others, just be kind. To yourself and to others, just be kind. Keep the lockdown. 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 Keep the lockdown. Lockdown. All this will pass, don't know when. All this will pass, don't know when. Keep fit and fit and healthy until then. Keep fit and healthy until then. Keep the lockdown. Lockdown. Keep the lockdown. 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 Keep the lockdown. No. Uh, right, I, I, bet, I better go back to my other self. Uh, <laughs> change hats. Put, right. Got a, oh, yeah, keep it around this way. Fantastic. Marvellous. <laughs> oh, God, there we go. Who oh, we'll put that up? Right. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> Fantastic. Right, I've got this... Uh, uh, it's, it's not even showing. I, I, I put this on for Bianca and uh, Julio. This was the, uh, that was the little hundred years of Romania from when I was over there a couple of years ago on the side there of the hat. So, uh, but uh, anyway, let's do another story. I think we'll go to, uh, I think we'll go, uh, if, 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 for those of us that have joined, just joined, this is the uh, Swindon Spring Festival Family Day on worldstorytellingcafe.com. Right on, on the cafe bit. You, if you want to join us, if you're looking on other, if you just mm -hmm. if you go in there, just just go on to the World Storytelling Cafe Stroke Cafe uh, dot com. Oh no, World Storytelling dot com Stroke Cafe, and uh, the uh, and press the join button, and you can come and join us in the room. Even uh, John, uh, 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 I think I think I got that right, didn't I? Finally. Yeah, John, you, you absolutely did get it right. There are lots of people watching on the screen at the moment who could come in the Zoom if they wanted. So to the lovely people in Argentina, if you'd like to click on the gold button, you could come in the room. To the lovely people in Montenegro, same applies. More lovely people in Morocco. So do feel free to come and join us. Okay, that's marvellous. Now, we're, uh, so I, seem to have, um, I seem to have lost you all here. 
uh, that, that's okay. Um, I'm gonna. I'm, oh right, I'm just gonna. Oh, that's good. That's good. I keep losing people, but it's. I, I love the way these machines just just do things themselves. You know, it's. Uh, you know, it's not operator error. There's a little man sitting inside my machine saying, "I'm gonna confuse him," and uh, like I'm not confused enough already. <laughs> I, I'm gonna. I mean, and I tell you what. But the great thing is, I've been all over. <laughs> Yesterday, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you're not the little man. You're the little creature sitting next to Sue. <laughs> you're 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 one of those one of those creatures. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yesterday I was in Cromer. Then yesterday evening I was in Northern Ireland. Now I'm in Swindon. Brilliant talking to people in Argentina. How good is that? <laughs> right. So, uh, right. Uh, uh, there, there's one person who's going to get uh, going to get, get get silenced in a minute. <laughs> anyway, we're going to Jamaica now. Actually, we're going to sort of we got Wessex via Jamaica. We've probably started in West Africa. We're going to do an Nazi story, and it's the one I know about how why there are thousands and thousands of Nazi stories. It's from way back in time. Now, before I start, now the storytellers amongst you hey, will God. know what to shout if I sh and and those children of storytellers uh, will know what to shout if I shout crick. If I shout crick, you'll shout back. Right, okay, we'll go that we'll go that again. Follow Sue. If I shout crick, you shout crack. Okay. So we're gonna do that. Crick. Crack. 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 Story broke me back. Now way back in time. When all the animals could talk to each other and chickens still had teeth. That all everything was named after tiger. There were tiger moths, there were tiger lilies, and of course, there were tiger stories. And every night. All the animals gathered around Tiger to listen to the stories. Now, children out there, I want to, to give me an animal. Give me an animal. Cow. A cow? Okay, there was cows. There was a whole herd of cows there. Give me yeah, another one. An alpaca. An oh, alpaca. The oh. yeah, yeah, they, they, they'd gone and nick that. Gone and nick that from someone's farm in Romania and just stuck it, stuck it there. That was great. Or oh, I'd seen it right. What else? A mouse. A mouse. A mouse. A mouse. You don't just get one mouse. You get hundreds of mouse. mice. Okay, let, let's have let's have some mice. Um, a great, great. This is really. If I do this in the classroom, they say giraffes, zebras, and that sort of thing. Now we've got mice, alpacas. <laughs> well, well, we've got all these things. Anyway, anything you can think of was gathered around my, my, around Tiger's feet, and suddenly, through the midst of them, came a tiny spider, a Nancy. And the Nancy looked up at Tiger and said, "It's not fair." What do you mean it's not fair? It's not fair. Everything <laughs> is named after you. I want something named after me. Well, Tiger wouldn't have minded giving away the, the, the moths, but it was sounded daft, a Nancy moss. And he wouldn't have minded giving away the lilies, that sounded worse, a Nancy lilies, but he didn't want to give away the stories. So when a Nancy asked for the stories, he didn't know what to do. And he thought, and he pulled that tiger beard and he scratched his tiger chin and he tapped his tiger paws on the ground a little bit. And after much thought and much consideration, which is a very long time, he said, okay, Anansi, you can have the stories if in seven days you can get me a good big, big what, container full of bees and a snake on a stick. Well, Anansi went off and he's walking through the forest and he's singing to himself. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Oh, dearie, dearie, dearie me. I don't know what to do. Yeah, that, that was probably, <laughs> rough. It wasn't bad. We could try that again. 
Okay, I don't know what to. Now, now I've got rid of you all. Now somewhere on this, hold on. I've, I've got to get get back to you so I can see you. Right. What the uh, it's going right. on here? Ah, well, you're there. I don't know what to. Do. I don't know do. what to do. Oh dearie, dearie, dearie me! I don't know what to do. 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 You all just am noticed I, am my I in a voice is appalling, a but a Nancy's was worse. And at the top of the tallest tree was Queen Bee, and she shouted, "Yeah, what's all that noise oh. down there?" <laughs> and the Nancy shouted back, "It's just me, Queenie. I've got a bit of a problem." I can hear that, said Queen Bee. Come up here and tell me about it. No, you've got wings. You come down here. She flew down. What noise do bees make? Bees. Right. Yeah, I think. You're yeah, this is, anyway, did, this is this is the act of how I earned an ad said lot. Congratulations. I told Tiger, I'd find out how many bees fitted in this good. And uh, Queen Bee said, that's easy. You just measure one of us, you take one of us, you measure how long we are and how wide we are and how fat we are and you times the whole thing together and that tells you how big we are. And then you do the same thing with the good and you take the first complicated sum and see how many times it goes into that second complicated sum and that tells you how many bees, bees will fit in the good. Well, I don't know, I couldn't, I was no good at maths at school and I'm no good now. And the Nancy was worse. So he said, look, Queenie, <laughs> I can't do that. That's just too much. Just get all your mates together. Come on. Come on. Never mind social distancing, physical distancing. Bring them all in. Bring that whole hive full of bees. Anyway, they, so she called them. How, 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 how do bees go? What noise? And as they got nearer, they got louder. And as they got nearer, they got really loud. Right, all right, keep your wings on. I've got a bit of a problem. Uh, we need to count, right? And so, can you all fly in this girl one at a time and, and Nancy will count you? All right, they started flying in. One, two, three, three four, five, five, six, seven, 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 771, 772, 773, 774, 775, 776, 777, hold it, hold it, hold it. 7,771, and the last bee was in the pot and the stopper was in, uh, in the garden, the stopper was on it, and it rolled through and put Tiger's feet. Tiger thought, I'll never get, I'll never expect him to do that. Still, he still never got going to get a snake on a stick. Well, and Nancy went home. Who's got who's got the whoopee cushion? Uh, <laughs> and, uh, so anyway, he went home and he looked in his cupboard, and in his cupboard was an avocado pear and an egg. And I remember doing that story in the school, and years later I met, I met one. He said, "Give me the story about the avocado pear." And. Uh, I'm thinking, what story was that? And so it's just children remember little details out of stories. And it took me ages to realize it was this story. Anyway, so he said, uh, give me that avocado pear. And so he took the avocado pear and he walked out in the middle of the forest and he dug a big hole and he got some water and he, and he, but he puts the avocado pear in the bottom of the hole and he took some water and put it around the edge of the hole and, and all around the mud in the hole. And it, he made the salt sides all slippery and slimy and disgusting. When I get to the word again, if my host could unmute everyone, that'd be fantastic. Right. So, and what was supposed to come along, the, uh, what was supposed to come along, was supposed to happen was the it was, snake was supposed to come along, slither, slither, slither and look down the hole, because he'd done it where a snake came along every day. And he was supposed to look down the hole and thought, amazing, fantastic, phantasmagorical. Okay, unmute everyone. Unmute everyone. I've got a message. The kids want to join in. Okay, hold off the whoopee cushion, but everyone else join in. That's fantastic. Or oh, everyone join in, but leave the whoopee cushion out. Fantastic. Brilliant. Oh. 
love it because I like that. I, I, I you know, I, I want to, I, I, I want every, I want to hear everyone. Damn, Lucy, you looking fine, girl. All right. So anyway, so there's uh, <laughs> So anyway, Snake came along like, and he was supposed to look down the hole and think, "Oh, amazing, fantastic, phantasmagorical." There's an avocado pear in the bottom of that hole. I think. I'll have that for my my dinner, and he and of course he'd go down the hole and he wouldn't be able to get out because the sides of the hole were all slippery and slimy and disgusting. <laughs> right, uh, disgusting. But what was happening is this, but who was watching Snake's friend Lizard? So when Snake came along like he did every day, slither, 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 and looked down the hole, thought, uh, amazing. Fan, fantastic, fantastic. fantastic. Oh. Oh, Whoa, big round of applause. No one gets that. Fantasmagorical. There's an avocado pear sitting in the bottom of that hole. I think I'll have that for my dinner. 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 I'm just testing your memory cells here. So you're still awake at, on a Sunday afternoon, not having a snooze post Sunday dinner. Right, so. And uh, so and then the lizard shouting, stop, stop, whatever you do, don't go down the hole. And Nancy's made the sides all slippery and slimy and dear. Disgusting. And you'll never get out again, no problem, said Snake. And he slithered down. But he left, put the end of his tail around a root that was sticking out. And he pulled, he ate up the avocado pear and pulled himself up by the root and slithered off into the forest. So when Nancy came along, there was no snake there was no avocado pear. There was absolutely nothing. Well, he went back. Nothing. He was very sad, which meant he wouldn't get the stories, obviously. So he went back and he looked. All he had in the cupboard was the egg. And he came out and he went to the forest where a new snake came along every day, slither, slither, slither. And he pulled down a branch of a tree and he tied a, string, tied a bit of string to it and he tied the other end to a rock on the ground. And he made a loop in the string and he put the egg in the, in the loop. And what was supposed to happen was this. Snake was supposed to come along like he did every day, slither, slither, slither. And look up and think, uh... Amazing. Fan Fantastic. Fantastic. There's an abac there's an egg hanging in midair. I think I'll have that for me breakfast. But who was watching Snake's friend Lizard? So when Snake came along like he did every day, so the, the slither, slither, you know, because Snake, Snake was supposed to get his neck caught in the loop and he'd be a snake on a stick and all that stuff. But when Snake came along like he did every day, slither, 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 and looked up and thought, uh, amazing <laughs> fan. Amazing. Phantasma. Phantasma. Oh There's an egg hanging in midair. I think I'll have that for my breakfast. 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 And yeah, you got that. That's so I'm going to give you and a few others. That sounds brilliant. Right. And uh, you're actually much brighter than the usual audience. People get mixed up and call it dinner. Actually, I get mixed up. But there, there's. Uh, but in fact, you are all absolutely right. Breakfast. And Lizard shouting, stop, 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 don't, if you do, don't eat the egg, there's a, you'll get your neck caught in a loop and you'll be a snake on a stick, no problem, said Snake, and he got his tail and he knocked that egg out, it all broke up into, on, on the ground, it got mixed up with the dirt and the grass and the disgustingness, which is by an amazing coincidence, exactly how snakes like their eggs done, and he had it all up, and he slithered off, back, in, back into the forest. And so when Nancy came along, there was no snake, there was no egg, there was absolutely nothing. nothing. Which meant he wouldn't get the potatoes. Stories. So he goes back and he looks in his cupboard, and of course, in the cupboard there is absolutely nothing. Nothing. Okay. Uh, Tom from somewhere says he's still muted. Get we know we need a bit of unmuting going on, so because we'll have we'll have lot. I, I like a bit of noise. Uh, the most of most of it most of it is fine, and uh, I'll just treat extraneous noise that I don't want as a 
as, as like people walking by and I'll just be sarcastic like if I was at a festival. You know, there's always those that couple, you know, and, and, and the storytellers amongst you will know this that have done open air. You know, there's the two, and it's usually mothers, and but occasionally dads, but it's mothers that get stuck with the kids. So they're all waiting just outside the tent and they're having a really loud conversation because they're trying to talk over the storyteller. Now, I just remind, it's just a reminder of what life is like in the open air for those of us that are stuck. Anyway, at the moment, we've got a Nancy with nothing and he's just walking through the forest and he's singing to himself. I don't know what to do. Oh, that was quick. I don't know what to do. I don't know, dearie, dearie, dearie me. I don't know what to do. When along comes Snake and he said, oh, I'm glad I met you, Nancy. He said, I, 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 I really want to thank you. I love the avocado pear and, and I really like the egg. But why are you trying to catch me? Catch you said, and actually nothing could be further from my mind. But I've just got a bet with, with Tiger that you're longer than this stick here. Of, and, and Tiger says, you're shorter. Of course I'm longer, said Snake. And tomorrow I'll prove it. So, okay, so the next day there was the alpaca the mice and there was everyone else sitting round and uh, round and there was Tiger and there was Snake stretched along the, uh, along the stick and he was about that much too short and everyone is shouting, stretch, 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 Snake, stretch. Stretch, 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 stretch snake, okay, stretch. Snake, I'm, stretch. I'm, I'm gonna keep shouting, but I want everyone, I, I want it to, I want, I want it so loud that, ha, that I want them to actually hear it, call it on, 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 you know, on the farm I'm supposed to be on. And I want them to hear it in, in Argentina. And actually I, I, I want the, I, I, I want, I, no, to, to, the, to all lot, what, can we, can we unmute, can we unmute the children? We got children, we got children that are upset out there because they're being muted. So could we unmute everyone so we can shout? And, and sometimes you, you probably need to press a little microphone on your own thing to unmute yourselves, but let's, let's keep, let's keep everyone unmuted. Right, stretch. Stretch, 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 and he's about this much too short. And Nancy hold it, hold it, and he ties his middle, tie, he's tied him on the middle, and he's about that much too short. And, and, and he does, and it's, and they're all still shouting really loud this time. It could be heard all around the globe. I want you shouting so much that the neighbors are banging on your walls if you're in a house next to your neighbors, right? And, and I, 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 I want, I, you know, and, and if you've got a police car running back up past I, I, I want you so loud that the police come running at your door saying are you having a party right you know you're not supposed to be having parties at this time so let's get let's get really loud this time stretch 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 one more time stretch Stretch, stretch, take, stretch, and just then uh, Snake's nose got right on the end of the stick, and then it's got the last piece of string stuck it round there. It was a snake on a stick, and in seven days, Anansi had got a gourd full of bees and a snake on a stick, and a, a tiger always kept his word, gave Anansi the stories, and that is one of the reasons I've been told why today. There are thousands and thousands of Nancy stories all round the world. Well, ah, now I have not the faintest idea of how long I've been rattling on. How long have I been rattling on? Mike, how long have I been rattling on? Oh, uh, about 40 minutes. Okay. So I think I really want to finish on this next story. And uh, it's one, uh, 
It's one I was told by Duncan Williamson. And uh, the, uh, uh, and, uh it, it's, I, I love it. I told this story in America once, and um, at the minute, it, it, because at the, uh, because it's got a bit in the middle about the king overtaxing people. Someone came up to me at lunchtime at the festival and said she was a, a, a singer and she said, uh, I've got to give you a, a bit of grief about that story you told. And I thought, but I, 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 I thought it was pretty harmless. And he said, I suppose you're one of those libertarians who are against taxation. And I realized then, that we can move from country to country and a story that means one thing in one country or move will be something else in an entirely different country. So I added a little bit on to it's that he didn't spend his money on anything, uh, on anything else, but he just, um, but I, I, he just, he just, I'm just talking about that. You have to be a little bit sensitive. Um, and, uh, so, I, this is a story called The King and the Lamp, and it was given to me by Duncan Williamson, who was an old Scots traveler, who went, you know, who, who I, I was very lucky to meet a few times, sat in a few fields, sat, uh, sat, sat it, uh, uh, sat, I sat round fires with him, and I drove my old Bedford CF across, and he sang to me, and I, I, it was just a great privilege. And he sang and told stories. And it was one of the few times I actually shut up because I was always listening to him. And uh, so this is one of his stories. And it's from way back in time. My hair was dark and my beard was ginger and all my teeth were me own. And there was a little older, a little old ped, uh, ped, uh, tinker, man that made things. And he, he was trudging through the country and everyone loved him when he got to a village. You know, he'd mend the pots. If people had a bit of money, they could give him a new pot. And he got to a village where he'd always gone to. And he'd always been welcome. And he knocked on the first door. And they had nothing. And he knocked on the second door. They wanted nothing. He knocked on the third door. They wanted nothing. And he went right through the village. And he got to the other end of the village. And he said, well, what's wrong? I, I, I mean... No one even wants a sauce for mended. And they said, well, there's a bit of a problem. The king is taxing us so hard and so heavily. We haven't got any money left. We can't, you know, we can hardly feed ourselves. We, 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 we certainly can't get anything mended. And uh, so, well, uh, yeah, okay. Um, I think I can do something about this," said the said the little tinker. And he went, and there was a road up to the uh, up to the king's palace, and he put his tent up in the middle of the road, and he built a little fire, and he started making a wonderful tin lamp, a little oil lamp. Anyway, the caretaker, custodian up at the castle, looked at him and thought, there's someone put up their tent and lit a fire in the middle of the road coming up to the king's palace. I'm, 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 if, I, if I allow this, I'm going to be in terrible trouble. And he ran down the road and he said, you, you, can't, you, can't, you, can't, you can't put your tent up here and you can't start making a little tin lamp and, and, and you have your fire going and all that sort of thing. He said, I can. So what do you mean you can? He said, uh, he said, I'm a, I'm a citizen, aren't I, of this, uh, of the king? And he said, yes. He said, and I'm a subject of the king? He said, yes. And he said, and this robe belongs to the king? He said, yes. And he said, well, in that case, um, I can be here. Well, the Castania didn't know what to do. He scratched his head and he went back. Well, the captain of the guard saw it. And he came running down. And he told him the same thing. But in the middle of that, along came the king's carriage. <coughs> and it stopped. And he said, "What's going on? The wrong kind of leaves on the road." He said, "No, no, 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 no. He never do anything." He said, "There's a there's a tinker out there making a tin lamp." He said, "That's extraordinary. 
I've never seen anything being made before. He said, let, let me out. And he looked and he saw the tinker finishing his lamp. And he said, he said that's marvellous. He said, I'll tell you what, I'll give you 20 guineas for it. I think I said, no, it's all right, you can have it. Now I insist, 20 guineas, but it better be good. Well, the king went over here, he did a lovely, beautifully crafted lamp. And uh, he, uh, he went back and that night he invited all his friends around. And he took his favorite tablecloth, his, his beautiful lace tablecloth that his granny had left him. And he, uh, he, put it on the, he put it on the table. And he put the lamp on it. And he waited for all the guests. And all the guests came. And it got dark. And he lit the lamp. Horror! The lamp had leaked oil over all over his favourite tablecloth, the tablecloth, the lace tablecloth his granny had left to him. Bring me the tinker, he said. And that tinker was dragged before him and he was thrown down at his feet. And those that watched Deeps' of, Deeps of story yesterday will know where this is going. It's amazing. The same stories appear or, or the same themes appear all over the world. And he looked at the tinker, he said, look at my favourite tablecloth, the tablecloth my granny left to me. It's got oil all over it, and, and, and it's your fault. Oh, no, it's not your majesty. Well, whose fault is it? It's the, uh, it's the person who sold me the tin. I couldn't, the, the tin was of such poor quality. I couldn't... Uh, you know, I couldn't make a decent lamp. Well, bring me the person who sold you the tin. Well, the tin seller is thrown down at the feet, uh, the feet of the king. Look at me favourite tablecloth, the tablecloth my granny gave to me. It, it, it's all covered in oil and from the lamp made by the tinker and, and who, who got the tin, for, tin from you and it was such bad quality. It's your... Oh, oh no, it's... Oh. Not your majesty. It's the tinsmith. I couldn't get any tin from the decent tin from the tinsmith. Well, bring me the tinsmith. The tinsmith is thrown down at his, at his majesty's feet. And the, the king says, uh, look, look at my favourite tablecloth that my granny left to me. And uh, the... Um, and it's a beautiful lace and, and it's covered in oil and from, from the lamp made by this tinker who got the tin from this man who got the tin from you. It's your fault. Oh, no, it's no. your majesty. Well, whose fault is it? Well, it's the bellows maker. <clears throat> I couldn't get any decent bellows and I couldn't get the fire hot enough. And... The uh, uh, well, and it, to make any decent tin, it's oh, uh, well, bring me the bellows maker. The bellows maker is thrown down at the king's feet. Look at my favorite tablecloth that my granny left me, it's covered in oil made from the lamp made by, made by this tinker who got the tin from this man who got the tin from the tinsmith who couldn't get make any decent tin because his bellows, the bellows you sold him were, 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 were no good. It's your. Oh. oh no, it's not your majesty. your majesty. Well, whose fault is it? Well, it's the leather maker. It's the leather worker. I couldn't get any decent leather for the bellows. Well, the, the, well bring me the leather. The leather maker. Well, the leather he's come in and <sighs> look at my favourite tablecloth that my granny left me. It's covered in oil made from the lamp made by the tin crew. Got the tin from this man who got the tin from the tinsmith who couldn't get his get any couldn't, couldn't make any decent tin because the bellows and the, couldn't make any de, the bellow, bellows maker. And, oh, I tell you what. The, the you know in the the bellows maker the bellows man couldn't make any decent couldn't get his hot enough because the bellows he had were made from leather he got from you it's your oh, oh. oh no it's no. your majesty well whose fault is it? it's the farmer 
I, you look at these cows, they're thin. They got their ribs sticking out. And the leather is so thin, I couldn't get any decent leather. The skins are so thin. Oh, bring me the farmer. The farmer's thrown down his feet. Look at the tablecloth that my granny left to me. It's covered in oil from the, the lamp from the tinker who got the who couldn't make a decent lamp because they got the tin from this man, who got the tin from the tinsmith, who couldn't get, make any decent tin because the bellows he got from the bellows maker, who couldn't who did, couldn't didn't have any decent bellows because the leather he got from the leather man, and he who couldn't get any decent leather because of the cows he got from you. It's your... Oh. oh, no, it's no. Your, your majesty. majesty. Well, whose fault is it? I can't say. Look, I'm the king. I'm the king. If, uh, if I ask you, you have to answer my question. He said, well, uh, I hate to tell you this, your majesty, but it's your fault. Oh. Why is that, said the king? Getting a bit angry right now. So, well, you taxed us so hard that I normally take a little feed to market so I can sell it and I've got some money for the year and and, and then I then then I've got something to feed my cows through the winter when they're brought in and uh and, uh, and you know I sold a bit to market, but that meant I did you know that. No one had any money to buy it, but they bought, uh, sold it at rock bottom prices, and and then I didn't have any feed left over for for the cows through the winter, and um, you know, and they got thinner and thinner and thinner. I'm afraid it is your fault. Oh. And the, His Majesty scratched his cheek and thought, well, actually, you're absolutely right. It's my. Oh. And he turned to little Tinker. He said, thank you very much for giving me such a great lesson. And uh, and you can you can put your tent up anywhere you want for the rest of your life. And I'll tell you what, the little Tinker thanked him kindly, but he never put his tent up again in the middle of the road. But from that moment on, whenever he went to the village, there was always a little money to buy a new saucepan or have a tin cup mended. And that is the end of today's stories. And I thank you for listening. And I thank Matt for, 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 for the family day. And I thank Mike for the World Storytelling Cafe. And I thank you all for being the audience. There, there, is, there is a little cap, there is a little hat underneath there you know, I mean, if anyone wants to drop anything in it, you know, it's always, it's always appreciated. But right now, we're not going to close off because we're going to have a little discussion. Well, you can talk to each other or you can talk to me. You can do whatever you like, but we're all online and we're, we're from all over the world. And I, that, you know, I've got to say before I shut up, and I will in the two seconds, that one of the most amazing things about this whole enterprise is that we've been able to connect from across the globe. So could everyone give Mike, Mike Wood, who's sitting there, and Lucy, who's sitting somewhere, a big round of applause. George. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Uh, Swindon, live from Swindon. Um, I just want to say thank you very much uh, for your lovely storytelling. It's really nice that we can all be here together today even though we're all so far away from each other and um, I just want to thank everyone at the World Storytelling Cafe for linking up with us for this and I mean it's just it's wonderful in this world where we can't go out we're all over different parts of the world and the country wherever and it's just really nice to all be here together so thank you very much it's been thank great you. thank you very much ah that's well, nice it's, it's just uh, I mean I I enjoyed this so much, I can't tell you. Anyway, you're all very quiet. You know. I want to know who had the whoopee cushion. Pardon? I want to know who had the whoopee cushion. <laughs> is, it, is it the uh, same person that had problems with their bottom? <laughs> yeah, that, that, I, I, and see, is, she, is that just a smile you've got on that? Is that a guilty smile or a... Elsia, is oh, that no. a good... oh, God, no, she, Althea would 
never do anything like that. She's really well behaved. <laughs> no, she's not. I, not. <laughs> I, I remember when she was really small and you were trying to trying to tell stories and we were having to put, you know, she, she would go up to you in the middle of a story and demand something like, like food or, you know, oh. like you hadn't fed her for three days. Yeah, I think she, I think she wandered off and I think it was at Cambridge she made the comment, you said, she <laughs> Great storyteller, terrible mother, I think is what you said. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was Max, Sarah. I think it was Max as well, but I think you might have a date on your hands, Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's... Uh. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you, Sarah. I'm, I'm, I, I am at the moment, uh, uh, thank you Lucy, I, I, I'm at the moment, I'm only able to see four people because I'm doing this on a phone as opposed to, because the device where I can see everyone has just got lousy sound, so uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I've, I've taken the sound rather than anything else. Uh, David? Hi. <laughs> Did you enjoy that David? Yeah, sure. Thank you. He's, um, he's not muted. Uh. Oh, it was just like it was just like being in a field, Lucy John. Uh, oh, well, yeah, the, was there enough digressions for you? Oh yeah, the, just, the just <laughs> right <laughs> amount of digressions. But... <laughs> yeah, I, I can't do that when I'm pre-recording. You know, <laughs> you just don't get into digression mode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Nice. Ah. Uh. Since we're all watching from around the world, John, what is the weather like in Swindon at the moment? Well, the reason I'm doing, I would normally do this, I have my shelter. I'm just going to uh, move this round so you can see out the window. I have my shelter down there, oh. which I would normally have in a field um, with the cloths all around the back. And, uh, the, um, and I did go out to put that up. Um, uh, to, to rig that today, but there was so much wind. I wouldn't have might have, I'd have been dry, but there'd have been so much wind across the microphone, it wouldn't have worked. So it's very windy and it has suddenly become wet. So has anyone got sunshine? <laughs> yeah. Norfolk. Oh, okay. Marrakesh. Marrakesh, Marrakesh, you got sunshine. <laughs> yeah, Transylvania is not that bad either. Transylvania, yeah, well, you know, yeah, okay. Um, anywhere else? What's it like in Argentina? I think they're not in the room at the moment. Actually. That's okay. Right, so so actually, when we stop social distance, I don't like to call it social distancing because we're not social distancing, we're being incredibly social. I call it physical distancing. And uh, they, uh, when we stop physically distancing, we can, um, you know, we, we can all experience good weather again. <laughs> But uh, I, I, I like Mike, who's actually sitting in um, in in Hertfordshire, Morocco. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> He's only about two hundred yards away from me, actually. <laughs> yeah, that, it's uh, it's just that you're more honest, Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say anything. <laughs> I, I have been known to have a, a desert island behind me. <laughs> oh. I, I, I've got this uh, fine storytelling sign up behind me that uh, Stephanie's mother made. That's um, so I, I was intending to have that out on 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 tour this year, because because uh, last year I nicked Pauline Cordner's, and uh, I had to give it back in September when she went back up to Scotland. So just, <laughs> I, 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 I got my own this year. Very fine piece of craftsmanship there. It's lovely. Well, it still needs it still needs sewing around the edges of the letters, but um, I can't get it back to her to do that. She sent it down to me for approval, and then suddenly the lockdown has come. So I, you know, we can't get it back to finish. But it, it, it's holding up. It's holding up in for this, but it probably wouldn't do. Wouldn't get in round in the van for a whole season at the moment. I think that's a perfect opportunity to learn a new lockdown skill of sewing, John. No. Uh, <laughs> no. no, 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 that's a, that's a, well, one, you know, the, the, um, 
that I couldn't even thread needles when um, very well. I always had to take a needle with a huge eye in to get it, even when I was younger. So the idea of getting the thread through a needle now is just a, a non-starter. And um, I have done sewing in the past. And you can always tell the clothes that I sewed up by myself. You know, the, uh, they're the ones that sort of ripped in the middle of a field and I did emergency sewing. Um, with safety. Uh, I, I'm going to stick to storytelling. <laughs> but I want to develop g gangster granddad. I, 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 I think. I like uh, granddad. I remember you, like you coming to work with me at a school in Lower Stocks and you told a story about three stripes down the side of. The Devil's Trainers or something? Ah, no, 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 Beast, that, that was, I told that the other day, actually. I think it is on one of my sets, but it's um, it's how how Jack beat the devil. And uh, uh, the three strike, yeah, it was, a, you know, like he, uh, it was one, it was a 16 year old devil and he had Adidas stamped down each horn and three stripes down his tail. That was the one. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to remember how that went because Amber was talking about brands of sportswear and i just said if she was um going for a devilish look she should go for three stripes down her tail yeah <sighs> ah well thank you all that's been brilliant yeah thank you thank, thank you john thank you john thank you john are you uh, mike's on a desert island now <laughs> yeah he is there's no stopping him <laughs> Traveling virtually. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Yeah, thank you, John. Thank you, John. Bye. Bye. Thank you, John. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, Bianca. Bye.